Walt Disney presents... From Frontierland, four down and five lives to go. Father, you'd better administer the last sacraments. Any man who wore the badge of sheriff in the old Southwest was generally the most important man in town. Some were good men, using their authority and their six guns to establish law and order. And there were those who were not so good. But good or bad, their names and their exploits have become legendary in story and song. Story and song. That's your cue, fellows. Hear me? Sing! El Fago was calm and his aim, it was true. He'd ride with the law till the battle was through. With a star on his chest, he was law in the West. They called him El Fago, El Gato. El Fago had lived with his life on a thread. For many a gunman had left him for dead. And the legend was that, like El Gato the cat, nine lives had El Fago, El Gato. El Fago was wise and El Fago was strong. El Fago, El Gato, who made right from wrong. With a star on his chest, he was law in the West. Nine lives at El Fago, Baca. In this program called Four Down and Five Lives to Go, you will see how boldly original was El Fago Baca's approach to the job of sheriff. When he was elected, there was a long list of outlaws and rustlers who had not been arrested. Instead of organizing a posse and going out to track them down, El Fagel decided to give them a chance. So he sent them a letter. Dear sir, I have a warrant for your arrest. Please come in by the 15th and give yourself up. If you don't, I will know you intend to resist arrest and I will feel justified in coming after you and shooting you on sight. Signed, sincerely yours, El Fago Baca! We got your notice. Yes. So, we come and turn ourselves in. Well, I'm glad to see you gentlemen see things my way. Well, we figured doing a little time better than tangling with a man like you. It's all right, Mr. Morgan. These gentlemen are here in answer to our letters. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that, uh... Hello, Squeaky. Hi. Hey, my partners. The Baker boys. Well, all three of you are charged with blotting brands on Dave Logan's cattle. Are you guilty? Reckon we got a shot. The judge won't be in until tomorrow, so you might as well start serving your sentence now, no? Mr. Morgan, would you mind showing these gentlemen to the jail? We know where it is. <laughs> Come on. Carlson! I hear the grub better than used to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who'd ever believe it? You know, first that bunco artist, then the horse thief, and now these rustlers. It looks like law and order's finally come to Socorro. <laughs> But they're not all that easy. Here, listen to this. If you want me, you blankety blank, come and get me. I'll be waiting in Cibola Canyon Wednesday morning. Signed, Charles Benton Fillmore. Who's he? Oh, that's old Grubstake Charlie. He's been hunting for some lost mine up there for 40 years. What do we want him for? Well, he shot some young prospector that wandered off into the mountains. Did he kill him? 
No, but he says he'll shoot any white man that comes into his territory. He's a queer old bird. He's always singing in the street, by and by. <laughs> I think he's local. <laughs> <laughs> well, tomorrow is Wednesday. I think I'll accept his invitation. Well, I'll go with you. Hmm? Please, Mr. Fillmore invited me. He did not invite you. You're really beginning to believe you got a charmed life, aren't you? <laughs> no, no. You know, there's a saying in Spanish, death is as certain as life is uncertain. But everybody says I have nine lives like a cat. And I want him to keep on thinking it. It helps my job. Me swallow my plug. Come here. <laughs> it would have been a lot easier if you would have come in of your own accord like I asked you to. You think I'm loony? Well, now you have to come in with me. What for? You had no right shooting that young prospector. Well, he got in my territory. It isn't yours. You haven't filed any claims. Of course I ain't. Do you think that I want some nosy squirt to find what I spent a lifetime looking for? Listen, Charlie. What? It's against the law to shoot anyone unless they are endangering your life. Now, will you come in and serve a short jail sentence? What, they leave my property unprotected? No, sir. No. Well, I see your point. Listen, I tell you what. What? I'll let you go this time if you promise not to shoot anyone else. I'll shoot them if they get too close. No, Charlie, you warn them. You don't shoot anyone unless they draw on you first. All right, I'll warn them. But if they don't move fast enough, I'll shoot them. Is that good enough for you? Well, I guess it will have to be. Huh. Come on, we shake on it. Come on. Here's your pistol. In this way, by and by, we will meet on that beautiful shore. Here, come on. Come on, Eddie. For she is sweet Anita, Anita la bonita, and to the senorita, my love I will proclaim. In the sweet, in the sweet, by and by, by and by. See Charlie? Yes, but he saw me first. Look. <laughs> he feels he ought to stay there and protect his rights. You know something? I agree with him. Well, yeah, that's what I might have expected from you. Say, listen, you got a visitor inside. Carter Wingate from the governor's office. Again? You haven't broken any more rules, have you? <laughs> Afternoon, Sheriff. Hello, Mr. Wingate. What brings you all the way from Santa Fe this time? I've got a job for you. A tough job. Well, that's good. I don't think you're going to like this one. Why not? I want you to go after a countryman of yours. Oh? What's his name? No, we don't know. He, he calls himself El Sinvergenza or something like that. El Sinvergenza. That means the shameless one. He's one of the old window rock gang. I thought all of them were either dead or in the penitentiary. Well, this one has never been apprehended. Yesterday, a man held up the Bell End Mining Company. 
Shut the paymaster down in cold blood after he'd handed over the money. We think it's this, uh, El, uh, Sinvergüenza. Have you got any leads? Well, he was seen heading southwest, in the direction of a little town called Frisco. Frisco? I'm going there for a fiesta tomorrow. It's a feast day for a special friend of mine. Well, then you can combine business with pleasure. Hmm? Now, what does this man look like? Unfortunately, we don't have any photographs of him. He's about medium height, dark eyes and hair. That fits about half the population of New Mexico, including me. No scars or distinguishing marks. Well, a deputy in Gallup swears he shot him through the right shoulder once, so there ought to be a mark there. No, no, his shirt would cover that. How did he dress? Like any vaquero. What kind of horse was he riding? A sorrel, but he might have changed to a fresh one. He had enough money after that holdup. No special saddle or spurs? I don't know. Well, I know this isn't much to go on. Oh, he was heavily armed, supposed to have seven notches on his pistol. Well, that's something. Uh, here's the warrant for his arrest. Made out to John Doe, alias El Son Baguenzo. There's a thousand dollars reward on him, dead or alive. Well, you'd rather have him back alive, wouldn't you? Sure, but I don't want you to take any chances. He's a dangerous killer. Well, I have more than the usual reasons for wanting to bring him in. It's men like him who give our people a bad name. <laughs> Hola, compadre! Hola, compadre! <laughs> oh, I was wondering when you were going to show up. <laughs> Is Anita Chavez here? Sure, and she has been asking about you. <laughs> Have any strangers come to the baile? Oh, a few gringos are here, but they are well behaved. Things are much better since Dice Smith left town. <laughs> I mean strangers of our own blood. Oh, there are a few. You don't mind if I examine their weapons? Of course not. Are you looking for someone in particular? I'm looking for a man who calls himself El Sinvergüenza. Well, that is a bad name. Well, he's a very bad man. Oh, no, no, <laughs> that is not necessary, El Pico. You are a sheriff. Well, even a sheriff should not wear his guns when he dances. <laughs> <laughs> Senor Baca, we are honored to have you here. Gracias, Senor Vez. You know that man over there drinking alone? No, but I do not like his looks. Neither do I. Excuse me, but I must ask Senorita Chavez for the next dance. Con permiso. I hope I didn't hurt your foot too bad. Oh, really, it was nothing. Hello, Senor Baca. I'm so glad you could come. Anita, you're more beautiful than ever. Gracias. May I present Mr. Jim Spears? Jim, this is El Fego Baca. I'm happy to make your acquaintance. Likewise. Mr. Baca is sheriff of Socorro County. You have heard of him now, truly. I reckon I should have, but... Well, I'm pretty new to these parts. Me and my friends just overheard a Longhorns up from Texas. Do you mind if I have this next dance? I guess Anita would be glad to dance with someone who won't stomp all over. Missed seeing you. It's too bad we live so far apart. You must be very busy. I hope that your new job does not keep you from realizing your ambition. To become a lawyer? <laughs> no, I'm studying at night when I'm not thinking of you. Senor, you should not talk like that. Why not? It's true. And how's our little statue of Santana? I'm not too late for her procession, am I? Oh, no, we are taking her to the church at midnight. If that stranger at the end of the table should ask you to dance with him, give him permission. Why, I've refused to dance with him already. He is most ill-mannered. Why should you want me to dance with him? Because I think he's carrying a revolver in a shoulder holster. And you can find out for me. Here, you need something to revive yourself. Now play something lively. Do you mind if I dance with this senorita? 
if the lady is willing. Maestro, my compliments. The waltz, please. May I have this dance? Well, I only just got started. So did I. Look, mister, whoever you are, I'm finishing my dance. Please, senor. You're setting a bad example. Oh, yeah, maestro. Play that other piece. The waltz, por favor. It appears I have made a mistake. My apologies. You may have your gun back when the ballet is over. Gracias. <laughs> Gentlemen, my waltz. <laughs> <laughs> Permiso. What's wrong, Senor Juez? A woman just came in with a terrible story. This afternoon, as she and her family were coming here to the fiesta, a bandito stopped them and demanded their best horse. Was he a paisano? Unfortunately, he was. When her husband protested, he killed him and then forced their daughter to ride off with him. Mm -hmm. It sounds like the man I'm after. Which direction did he take? He rode south toward the Mogollon Range. And what kind of horse did he steal? The woman can tell you. Will you help me to organize a search party? No, no, I can make better time if I go by myself. Will you lend me an extra cartridge belt? Of course, Senor Baca. <laughs> Yes. Who are you bury? A young girl, senor. My son found her tied to a tree. It was not a pretty sight. The sign of her murderer? The track led south. It must have been an Apache. Hey, that's all right. I'm not after you. Did you see anyone ride through here recently? We sure did. Dark complexed fella snuck into our camp yesterday, took pretty near all the grub we had. What kind of horse was he riding? A big buckskin. He lit out for those mountains and we followed him as far as we dashed. Well, what stopped you? Why, sure. Them's the Chiricahuas. There's plenty of Mescalera Apaches living up there. I sure hope they get them. While you're about it, hope that I get them first. You going there alone? Sure. Sure wish you luck. my own blood. A very bad man, a killer of women and a disgrace to his people. Have you seen him? No. I will keep them. Tell your chief I wish to speak to him. Yes, 
Man you seek was allowed to pass through our country yesterday. He gave us silver and said that he was being pursued by white men. I must find this man for the sake of my people. By now, he is far ahead of you. He will escape unless you make medicine against him. What do you mean? Tonight you must rest so your thoughts will be clear. In the morning you will go apart and think a long time. What is the name of this man? I do not know, but he calls himself the Shameless One. Mm. You will think. Shameless One? There is no reason to hurry. No one is following you. On the second day, you will think. Shameless One, you are very tired. You will make camp early tonight and sleep a long time. On the third morning, you will think. Shameless One, you are feeling sick today. There is no reason to take the trail. Now, you will be close. If you think hard enough, you will know where he is hiding. But do not rush forward, making loud noises like a white man. Move slowly, like a coyote about to spring upon a bird. The Apache would carry a bush in front of him, creeping forward an inch at a time. When you are very close, think. Shameless one, your bullets cannot harm me. Your aim will be bad, for the sun is in your eyes. You will shoot too quickly. Now you will capture your enemy, for you will be protected by your thoughts. I am most grateful. My thanks. And now will you show me which direction he took? My men will show you. The trail is hidden, but it leads down into the hot country. Mister, stand up and don't try any tricks. What you sneaking up like an engine for? Meant to bushwhack me, did you? Say, is that your campfire, soldier? Sure is. I've been trailing a kiddo for a week. I thought I'd finally caught up with him. You ain't an Anglo. Where'd you steal that badge? It belongs to me. You speak mighty good English. I ought to. I was raised in Kansas. Kansas? Where were you born? Sakota, New Mexico. I'm sheriff there now. What proof I got you ain't lying? Well, if this badge isn't enough, I have a warrant for this bandit's arrest. Come over to the fire and let's see. Where's the rest of your outfit? Staked out along here like me. Have you seen a man riding a big buckskin? We just moved in tonight on border patrol. Some horse thieves been stealing stock from Fort Huachuca and using this trail to run them into Mexico. I guess you're all right, Sheriff. Sorry, right, here's your gun. I'll go get my horse. You might as well give up. This fellow you have to is safe by now. The border's just a mile from here. Well, I'll have to go across and get him. Are you loco? You can't cross that line. It's a violation of international law. Oh, I won't violate any laws. I'll, uh, arrest him when I bring him back.
días, Chato. Buenos días, jefe. You feed and water my horse? Está bien, patrón. Where's the owner of this one? En la cantina. Según el señor cruzó la frontera hace una semana en el paso. No puede ser él, mi capitán. Está bien, por mientras. ¿Y usted, señor? ¿Qué hay? Tenemos chuletas, pozole, menudo. Un plato de pozole. Está bien. Se mira muchas caras desconocidas y tú te ves muy caminado. Yo busco al que cruzó la frontera anoche. Bueno, resta tranquilo si no me tratas de engañar. ¿Y tú de dónde vienes? Soy de Chihuahua, mi capitán. ¿De Chihuahua? Yo también, está bien. Cuarta fina, jefe. ¿Cuánto por esta? Cinco pesos. Horse here? No, I think it was your mother. Are you sure? Sure. Hey, where do you think of that buckskin? He looks a little lame. Who does he belong to? Me. Paid and paid for him. Got fifty dollars to boot. Where'd you get him from? Well, I slept with. Said he's in a hurry. Buckskin be all right in a day or two. Is he still in the cantina? No, he took off. <laughs>
Constance. What do you want with me? I guess the identification is complete, Mr. Sinvergüenza. Who are you? El Fegovaca, Sheriff of Socorro County. I have a warrant for your arrest. You've got no right to arrest me. We're in Mexico. I know, but we won't be for long. Where are they? How can you do this to one of your own blood? And out of my blood, you're descended from a he god. <laughs> you are going to have to do some explaining now. Those are the federales. Now listen, we're going to beat them to the border. If you do not keep up, I shall be forced to drag you there and the end of my reata. Adelante! shooting over our heads like that. I now hereby present you with this warrant. Hey, what's your real name? Alfonso Fernandez. Alfonso Fernandez, alias Asinvergüenza. The charge is murder in the first degree. Bueno, vámonos. do you think we'll be holding him here, Sheriff? Until the prosecuting attorney arrives from Santa Fe with the indictment. You know, I got a hunch that Fernandez won't live long enough to stand trial. Why? Well, feeling's running pretty high against him. I had to move some of the other prisoners out of his cell to keep him from doing him bodily harm. Who's that other one in there with him now? Ah, that's a young killer named Jesse Hogg. He's wanted over in White Oaks for shooting a blackjack. The marshal's picking him up tomorrow. Good evening, Sheriff. Hello, Mr. Hardy. That was good work capturing that woman killing varmint. But what's all this nonsense about getting him a lawyer? Because everyone, no matter how bad his crime is, is entitled to a lawyer. You know that. You'd save a lot of time and taxpayers' money if you turned him over to the safety committee. Mr. Hardy, I want to see justice done the same as you do. But it's going to be done in accordance with the law. Suppose we just come in here and take him away from you. I wouldn't try that. No one is going to take a prisoner of mine unless he shoots me first. And you know I'd have a few more lives after that. You may need him. Looks like I'd better sleep here tonight. Stop it, will you? I can't sleep. Them vigilantes busted me. They'll happily string me up, too. Sir, why don't you tell me you shut up, boy? I was all set to bust out of here before they brung you in. Uh, how? Yeah, I got my ways. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna chew your way right through these bars with your teeth? <laughs> Come on, laugh, laugh, but I got friends waiting with horses back in the Texas Ed Saloon. They got word to me. How can you get out of here with your arms seeing shackles? Just as Billy the Kid busted out of the Lincoln County Jail. Hey, he took a gun off of a guard. That's right. Now look, this old coot, he'll have to unlock these when he brings us our breakfast. I'm coming with you. The vigilantes. Seems to be most of your paisanos. Should I go get some help? No, I think I can handle it myself. Give us the man called El Sinvergüenza. I'm sorry, Don Carlos, but I cannot let you have him. I am the brother of Maria Delgado. I demand that you bring us her murderer. I understand how you feel. It is not for you to punish him. Why should you protect a killer of women? Why need we wait for a trial? Because that is the law of the land. Our land. Do not talk. If you will not give him up, we will go in after him. You stand back. This gun is loaded with buckshot. I'll use it if I have to. But please, do not make me use force against you. You are my own blood. You are a traitor to us. And you are blinded by vengeance. 
Now listen, all of you! I once faced a mob that wanted to take my life. You know about it, huh? When I stood up to them, you thought I was a hero. You despised the men who were in that mob because you knew they were bullies, cowards. Well, one mob is no different from another. You're not human beings anymore, you're a mob. Now you go on home, become human beings again. He is right. Let the Ablo hang El Silvergüenza. Hey, Why don't you go get yourself some breakfast? The Grand Central should be open by now. I don't like to leave the prisoners. Well, everything's quiet back there. Besides, I'm here. All right. I'll go get some coffee. So, well, breakfast time. Sure got a nice new jail. Sure is. Nice new courthouse, too. Yep. Now that's got a nice new cemetery. Keep your mouth shut. Shots from over your way. Now, my friends are hidden them trees. You steal yourself a horse somewhere and follow us. Those killers got to be taken. Maybe you'll let us do it our way this time. Ross saw him right out of town, or three of them. Ain't we going to wait for the sheriff? Uh-huh. I'm afraid he wouldn't approve of what we got in mind. Come on, boys. Have you seen a 
killer with a rifle. No, I ain't, Sheriff, but I'll help you. Good, come on, you help me. You cover that side of the mission, but be careful. He's a killer. You'd better administer the last sacraments. No, Father, not for me, for him. You can't go in there. I'll only be a minute. Mr. Hardy, come on in. It's after hours. You've had far too much company today. Mr. Hardy is not company. He's here on business. Then I'll expect you to leave in a few minutes. Yes, sir. Now, Fago, we're all mighty thankful you're going to survive. Survive? The doctor says I have at least four lives left. Tell me about Jesse Hogg. Did you catch him? Well, we were right on the tails, then him and his companions split up. I chased Jesse into Saboli Canyon, and the doggonest thing happened. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't funny. Oh, I'm sorry. Go on. Just as I raised my gun to get a shot, someone plugged Jesse right between the eyes. I looked all around, didn't see a soul. But you heard someone singing in the suite by and by. Yeah, how'd you know? I had a $20 hat ruined there once. That was Grubstake Charlie protecting his rights. Well, I'll be doggone. <laughs> oh, look, compadre, I brought someone to see you. Is it? Sure, but we had to sneak past the dragon. Well, send her in. Well, I gotta get going. Anything I can do for you, just holler. How good of you to come to see me. Mio gracias. They're beautiful. You look fine, El Fago. Naturally. Do you think a few bullets could stop El Fago Baca? When we heard about you, the whole parish started to make a novena for your recovery. That was good of them. What's this? Little Santana. Father Cabrera said if you wanted her so much, you should have her. Well, I won't keep you, but I would like to borrow you for a little while. <laughs> Anita. You're positively glowing. I've never seen you so beautiful. That is because I am so happy. Happy that God spared your life and happy because I am in love. Are you Anita? You know how every young girl prays that she will find the right man? Well, I have found mine. Yes? You met him the other night at the dance, Jim Spears. Jim uh, Spears? Oh, oh, the young cowboy. Oh, he is outside. I'll fake away until you get to know him better. Oh, he is so good, so considerate. Well, send him in. I want to congratulate him. Hi, Mr. Backer. Sure glad to hear you're making out so well. Anita just told me the good news. I couldn't be more pleased. Much obliged. I'm going to do my best to make her happy. We already made a down payment on a little old ranch. We aim to be married next month. I, I sure hope you can make the wedding. I wouldn't miss it for the world. I wish both of you every happiness. Look out! The dragon is coming to throw us out. Oh, we better go. Take it easy now. We will be coming back to see you soon. Elfego, are you all right? Sure. You fooled me, compadre. I was afraid you were going to be heartbroken. Heartbroken? Me, Elfego Baca? Did you think I was serious about Anita? Sure. Amigo, the bee doesn't gather honey from just one flower. <laughs> <laughs> Now, how did you get in here? Mr. Baca, if you're going to break all the rules around here. Now, please, Miss Hazelmeyer, 
Don't be angry. He's a special friend who came a long way to see me. Hasta la vista, El Fuego. Adios, chula. <laughs> what did he call me? Chula. That means sweet. Oh. This is for you, Miss Hazelmeyer. For me? Yes, it's a little something I picked up on my travels. I want you to have it for being so nice to me. Oh, Mr. Baca, you shouldn't have done that. What is it? That's Our Lady of Guadalupe. Oh. Well, I'll treasure it always. Now, you'd better get some rest. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Senora Santana, you helped me once when I was in trouble. I hope you can do it again. just as soon as I pass the bar examination. And then I'm going to open a little office here. And I want everyone who's in trouble to come to see me. Especially my paisanos, whether they have money or not. <laughs> what do you think, I'm riding inside? No, no, I'm riding shotgun, see? <laughs> From now, Walt Disney recreates the authentic and heroic legend of Texas John Slaughter. For adventures exactly as they were lived, for the unaltered stories of the famed Texas Rangers, don't miss Texas John Slaughter, an entire series starting just two weeks from now. And now your host, Walt Disney, to tell you about next week's program. Our story next week comes wrapped in a very unusual package. A pigeon egg. There's a world of excitement and drama in this small capsule. And it will be hatched out in our true life adventure next week. Yes, this is a new kind of story that will reach deeply into your hearts. It is a strange and fascinating story of two outcasts, one a human being, the other a misfit exiled from his own kind. How these two came together, how they formed an unusual companionship, and how the power of the love they shared turned bitter defeat into a miraculous triumph. This is the sensitive, heartwarming event that awaits you next week when Walt Disney presents The Pigeon That Worked a Miracle. There's a world of fun and laughter in the misadventures of Pidge when she discovers the frantic and confusing world of people. Adventure and suspense soar to an amazing climax when a killer strikes from space. For a special television surprise created for the pleasure of everyone, be with us next week when Walt Disney presents 
the pigeon that worked a miracle. Over this ABC network, Zorro rides out of the night and into your home in a new series of new television adventures. Zorro, from the studios of Walt Disney. Follow Zorro into new adventures each week here on ABC. In most areas on Thursday night. This has been an ABC television network film presentation.